Here's some inspiration guaranteed to get you ready for Christmas 2021. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. We're going to start off with a handful of supplies that I thought I might need. So this came from Dollar Tree. It is some decorative cording or ribbon. Got some plastic candy cane ornaments. Some ribbon. This one is wired, but you can certainly use non-wired because that's what I ended up using. It's a candy cane bag from Dollar Tree. Did I say candy cane? Candy cane bag from Dollar Tree. And this was with their Christmas section. And this was a canvas painting that I got at the thrift store and I peeled off the canvas part. And I will in a moment take my pliers and get the rest of that off. I'm going to use a piece of foam board also. This is going to be the backing for our bag to give it some sturdiness. So I'm just using a little utility knife. I've measured it against my frame and I'm cutting off the back. Making sure the fit is good. If it's not, you can go ahead and trim it or you can wait to trim it after you've got it glued down. We're not ready to glue quite yet because we've got to do some work on the bag. Take the hanger out by pressing the plastic back through that hole on each side and you're going to use that handle as a hanger on the back. So just set it aside. I've chosen the side of the bag that does not have the fold in it. So I have a nice flat surface to work with. Go ahead and cut along the trim of that or the, the outside of that so you get a nice big flat picture. I think rotary, a rotary blade or a rosary, rotary scissor, whatever they're called, would probably be the best for this so that your lines are straight. You can see the little jaggedness in the lines there, but you can always clean that up. I want to kind of eyeball this to make sure that it is somewhat in the center. So I'm just getting an idea of where center would be. So when I put my frame on it, I can see my candy cane border. Using this glue stick, I'm going to cover the back. Nice and evenly. The most important I feel like would be the outsides and the edges so that it doesn't peel up. So this is pretty good coverage there. And you can see on the corner, the left bottom where I made a little boo-boo when I was cutting, but that's okay. That happens when you're crafting. We're not going to throw the entire thing away just because there's one little rough spot. We can work with that. So I'm just pressing it down with my hands and then I'm using my wooden ruler to make sure that it is pressed evenly down to the surface of that foam board. I've decided to use this trim to go around the edges to just kind of clean up where I've made my cut marks. This is a plasticky or coated type cord so it will easily the, the glue will kind of seep through the little openings in it so be sure that you protect your fingers use your little fingertip protectors mine came from Dollar Tree or you can use a little spatula or a little stick or something like that then I just want you to see how you turn the corner there this type of trim works really well for that. It'll lay nice and flat for you in the corners. It kind of looks like gingerbread house trim, doesn't it? So if you're working on something that's gingerbread theme or doing some projects with gingerbread, you might consider picking some of this up from Dollar Tree if it's still there because it's a cute little decorative trim, I think. We're going to go all the way around 
the bag picture with this to trim the entire thing out. Now, depending on the size of your frame, your canvas frame, you might not have to necessarily do the entire thing. I wanted to be sure that you didn't see that white board behind it when I put the frame back on it. So this is kind of my way of covering up my cut marks and making sure it's nice and neat when I put the frame back on. Here is some Fix-All adhesive that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to put that on first in a couple of spots around the edges. And then I'm going to use my glue gun because a glue gun will give a quick seal and then the Fix-All will make it more permanent. So see, once I put the frame down, you can't even see the trim on the sides. That is okay. All right, so I'm going to use that bag hanger, put some glue down, put a little piece of scrap paper on top to make our hanger. Here's an option for you if you don't like the plain wood, you want to zhuzh it up a bit. You can use some ribbon and just turn the corners and glue it down so you have a frame on top of your frame with a color. Or you can use a little piece of decorative greenery and a bow. My little piece of greenery came off of a vintage bell. So this was on the top of it. But I thought it would look good since we have holly and the berries on the candy cane picture. So it makes it perfect. I'm going to show you two different bows. First one we're going to do is like the, I think they call it a shoelace bow. Very simple. This ribbon I have is probably inch and a half, maybe an inch, and it has no wire in it. It's a ribbon that I like the color of, I like the polka dots, but it's just not that easy for me to work with in layered or stacked bows, so I thought it would be good for these simple bows. I'm trying to use it for my Christmas decor. So there's the first bow. You can do it that way and trim it up, or protecting your fingers. Take a length of ribbon, this was about 8 inches, double it on itself, make a loop, and then make a tail. I made this bow recently in another project. I think it was the candy cane. Yeah, I think it was the candy cane. And then we're going to just put that underneath, stack that on top. We're going to use a piece of green pipe cleaner, just because the green coordinates but you don't you don't have to you can use any color you're going to cover it up with your greenery you could also dot, tie it with some jute or you can use some floral wire here just hold that tightly and twist it so that it doesn't slip out and that you can adjust your bow just a little bit and trim off that piece in the back and decide where you want to put that in the center or on the side. And I like the side, so I'm just going to put it right there. A little bit of hot glue. Press the bow down so that it has some grip into that glue. That'll hold it. And then I'm going to trim the back off of here. Add a little glue to it. And put it right in the center. Rather than dovetailing, I want to show you something else you can do to trim up your bow, and that's just cutting it at an angle. Simple. So there's my little bow. Just to show you here, you can see where the trim is under there. You can always stain this wood, it's just raw wood. If you want to have a darker a darker frame, you can certainly do that. You can paint it. You can use some chalk paint or acrylic paint to make it whatever color you would like for it to be. For me personally, I think that the raw wood is a nice touch. So would you call this traditional or would you call this farmhouse? 
I just think it's pretty. What do you think about these Dollar Tree bags? Have y'all been using those in projects yet? They are really handy and they make some beautiful high-end looking signs. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Bye! Let's make this festive Christmas sign from a hanging Halloween sign. Keep watching! We're going to start with this hanging sign with four panels on it and a ribbon to holding it together. And you're going to take any type of craft paper that you like, scrapbook paper or these little paper packs. These originally came from Target, but it's a couple of years old. And I got it from Dirt Cheap. You just want to pick some coordinating papers. I'm going to start by taking this sign apart. Just going to pull off the ribbon in the back. And we'll save that for possibly another project. I'm going to peel off as much as I can peel off of these papers. Sometimes they come off easily and sometimes they are really stuck down. Don't worry too much about what you can or can't pick off of there because you're going to be able to use a sanding block to get it as a smooth surface. You want to get it smooth so that you can use your glue stick without having any bumps underneath. So you want to do that to all of them. And you can use the front or back depending on what you like. I originally considered using all four, but I decided to make it shorter. So you're going to see me choose three papers. And here are my options. It says red and black buffalo check. And then I'm going to use this red and white paper. Two pieces of that. So just making sure that the surface is nice and smooth and clean. I'm going to go ahead and go all the way to the edges and then make a good coverage all over that lock to put the paper on. So it's a stick down good all the way to the sides. This is very important because if you're going to trim it up using a sanding block, you don't want to have anything coming off. Okay, so I'm going to press it down on the back side and use my scissors and just trim it just a little to get it more manageable. And I can save those scraps of paper for possibly another project as well, so I'll set them aside. And then I'm going to use my wooden ruler and just run over the surface of that, pressing down to get a good stick. I have glue on the table. It drives me nuts. Okay, so then I'm going to do the same thing with the other two. This is a jot glue stick. Nothing fancy or expensive here. Smoothing it out. Same thing here. Now once everything is glued down and I have flattened it out nicely with my wooden ruler, I'm 
I'm going to get it nice and trimmed up. I've got my handy foam sanding block that comes from Dollar Tree. And I have been not been able to find these lately, and I certainly need some more. So I may have to get constructive and creative about what I use when I when this runs out of grip. You're just gonna sand away from at an angle, and I am butterfingers today. Down and away from that surface. And then it's gonna cut a line for you. It's really pretty easy to see on the dark paper. You can see the white line is where the paper is shearing. And then it can just easily be pulled away and just be sure you get all that white off. I mean, I cannot keep my hands on that sponge. What in the world? Too much coffee? Maybe I need some more coffee. You want to do this on all the sides. This is really great to give a rustic look because it gives that faded or worn edge appearance. It's just a nice look. You can see here with them together that they're all, all finished. Now to just decide what we want to do with it. There's lots of options you can do with those, but I think I'm going to use a single red ribbon down the back to hold these together. Just like this. It's important, I think, to try to get this as evenly in the center of that ribbon as possible so that they hang evenly. It would drive me nuts to see it hanging willy-nilly against my wall. I mean, if it doesn't bother you, hey, do whatever you want. But it would drive me bonkers and I'd have to tear it apart and fix it. So I'm just going to add some of my Gorilla Glue to hold it down. And I'm going to use a foam brush. It's just the, the stick from a foam brush that I pulled off to reuse. It's going to be my little spacer. Get my pattern the way I want it on the middle block and place it down. And then I'm going to add the other one to the top. And I like how the there's a variation in the patterns. There's something different. But it all looks rustic. And it's it's really, I think it's really cute. And then what we add to it is going to give it a farmhouse element that's very, I really, really like. Very unique, I think. You'll have to see. These are enamel, metal, ornaments that I got from um, Walmart last year on clearance after Christmas. Look at these. These are so cute. These are going to look so nice on here, I think. I'm going to pull off the little hangers. You can save them for another project or you can... Well, I would say you can throw them away, but I can barely get those words out of my mouth. You just really shouldn't throw away things when crafting, I think. Can always give it new life. All right, I'm gonna use some of these uh, tower blocks that come from the children's toy section in Dollar Tree and use it as a spacer so that you don't have, otherwise what I'm trying to say is you would have to put glue all around the outer edge to hold that enamel down on that paper. And I just think it would look sloppy. And so this way, it's not exactly flush. It gives it a little bit of dimension and it's going to make it great for the garland that I put around in a moment. So this just gives it a little a little extra grip. And then there's a little bit of space between the bottom of that ornament and the the backing down there. I'm just kind of trying to make this be the center by looking at the bottom, the ribbon that's underneath and the ribbon that's on the top so I get a continuous line. Well, that's what I'm aiming for. And then I'm just going to try to center that um, above and below and then on both sides so that it's pretty evenly spaced. Now, this is from the Dollar Tree. It comes wrapped up. It looks like one piece, but it's actually two pieces. It's a, a little berry garland, I guess. 
Hitberry, I think it's called. And it just fits nicely right. It catches right under the edge, but just barely, just enough to kind of hold it, you can see. So it makes attaching it a whole lot easier. And just a dot of glue on the end and then just stick it underneath and you don't see any glue at all on the outside. It's very nice. And I'm going to do that to each one of those letters. This also comes in red. Uh, you could definitely use red if that's what you want to do, but I think the red wouldn't show up as well on the Buffalo Check um, block. So I decided to go ahead and go with the white. fiddling around with it, trying to get the placements right. And now I'm going to move on to the little bows. This, I think, came from Dollar Tree, this little piece of trim that I'm using. if it, I've had it a long time, so if it didn't come from Dollar Tree, then it came from the thrift store. And I'm just going to make some little shoelace bows to put over the little holes in the top of each one of those ornaments. You can use all four of the blocks if you like. You can put Noel. You can do this any way you want. You can use any, any word that you want. But joy is a special word for me. And I like to have that word as a reminder around me. So you'll see it probably in a good deal of my Christmas decorations. But use whatever makes you happy and, you know, switch it up. Use different words. Okay, so a little dot of hot glue on the back and stick it down to each one of those and it fits in there. Sticks to it quite well. Now, some hot glues are not going to give you a grip if you put it on metal. It's going to pop off of there. It's just going to, it will. It just, I don't know why it does that, but it just pops off. Gorilla Glue has a little better grip and I seem to have more success with that. So I keep using that. I keep going back to that. This is some wire jute that came from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to take a section of that, make a loop and then twist it around itself so that we can make a hanger for this, which would be a little bit nicer than just hanging it from its original ribbon. You can use a little hot glue on the end of that when you put that loop together, a little bit of hot glue on there like I did just to keep it from fraying because it will come off the wire. Um, I don't know what happened to the footage of that, so I apologize for that. It's pretty simple though. You've seen me do it on other projects to keep the ends from fraying. I'm just going to double this ribbon back down on itself, leaving some space up there. And I'm not going to glue the ring on. I'm just going to leave it as it is. And then it's all ready to go. That's it. That is our project. What do you think? I think it turned out really nice. See my little sloppiness up there. I've got some more glue to pick off, but I'll get it. And there you have it. I hope you consider recycling some of your Halloween or fall decorations to use for Christmas. It's an inexpensive way to get the look that you like. So what brings you joy this time of year? Why don't you put that in the comments below and we'll all share it. Thank you so much for stopping by once again and visiting my channel. It means so much to me. Welcome to all the new subscribers and big hugs to you guys who've been around from the beginning. So glad to have you. I'll see you again soon. Bye. I'm going to repurpose a Dollar Tree sign. Keep watching.
couple of supplies you might need. You might need some paint, a floral pick, some wooden adhesive stickers, some ribbon, and then I have an emery board there. I've already painted the back of this sign, and you can see here that it was a summer sign from Dollar Tree. I used two coats of white chalk paint and let it dry well. So I've decided that this is how I want my stickers to be placed. And I'm going to start putting my ribbons on. Now you'll see in a minute I changed this up, but for now this is what I started with and this is a Dollar Tree ribbon. It's sort of a burlap type of material. I wanted to use it for the cap for the jar. And it does fit there, so you can certainly use this if this is what you want to use. So after you gluing it down, I've taken this red nail file. This way I wouldn't have to get out paint and the sticks. I just went ahead and clipped off a piece of this to use for the straw. It's a holiday DIY, so I thought the red would be a nice little added touch. I've just cut a piece down that will fit there over the white straw area, and then I am filing down with my sanding block. Just to make sure I get my edges even. It would drive me nuts if I hung it on the wall and did not have an even edge. I would likely take it down and, and start over. Do those kind of things bother you? I don't know why they bother me, but they do. So it fits perfectly, and I'm just going to take a little bit of hot glue, and I put it on the larger surface so I wouldn't burn my fingertips, and press it in place. So there is the straw in the top of our mason jar. So next I'm going to make the band around the middle and I've decided to use this thrifted burlap. This is about four, maybe five inches if I had to guess. Pretty sure I did not measure it. And that's a little bit large, but rather than cutting it and having it fray, I have decided <laughs> that I am going to fold it over and then glue it down. Rather like hemming it, but we're going to use hot glue. There are so many conversations that go on while I'm crafting downstairs. My husband actually came downstairs while I was doing this one and we were chatting about a few things. But oftentimes you'll see my kids down here, their little hands on the edge of the table. We talk about whatever. I add a little glue here and there for my daughter while she's doing her craft projects because she likes to craft with me. This happened to be a day that they were at school, so I had the basement to myself. Okay, I just used the clamps here that came from Dollar Tree just to hold it in place until the glue dries. And we remove it. We have nice clean edges. And I'm going to put this piece of black and white checked, buffalo check, whatever you want to call it, right centered in here. I've already measured this against the the jar and it is enough to go around the sides so that it could be very neat on the front and be glued in the back. You want to have enough that you can glue it in the back so you don't have to put glue in the front and have some frayed edges showing. It gives it some dimension and I like that. I'm going to pull it where there's no buckling in it, clamp it down my handy dandy scissors trim it up and then I'm going to put some glue in there to hold it in place like I always say use your little finger protectors if you have them that glue will go right through burlap 
So now I do not like that there is a little difference in the color of the ribbon on the top and the burlap that's on the bottom. I was gonna see if maybe I wanted to use the checkered ribbon on the top, but I decided against it. So I want this to still be a burlap texture and color on the top. So I'm just going to fold this over and use this and I think it looks so much better. Trimmed off the wire edge so that it wouldn't be too bulky on one side. Once that piece is dried, you can remove the clamps and then we'll be using them again to do this. Some hot glue. Again, this is burlap. You will burn yourself if you don't use your finger protectors. Or you could also use a little rubber spatula, silicone spatula, something like that. And again on this side. The little edges that are squared over there, I want to give it a more finished look, so I'm just adding a little glue and then rolling that over with my fingers and clamping it down until it holds. And it gives it, um, I think, a nicer look. I don't want the bottom of my little straw to show, so I've just pulled that up. And I like this much better than the, the first option that I tried. Okay, so these actually had um, paper on the back, like a wax paper on the back, and they are a sticker underneath. So they have adhesive already on them. Um, I don't know what happened to the clip of me actually peeling those off and putting them on, but that's what I did. I just centered them there and pressed them down. They have a really good hold. So I'm going to put a bow on the top, and I am using some of that same black and white checked ribbon to make a simple shoelace bow to put on the top. You can leave this this way if, if you like it. You can use something different. You can use this, that burlap ribbon that we used before to put a bow on there if you want to. Or you can stop here and not use a bow at all. Make it yours, remember? We're making it our own on this channel. Always watch videos for inspiration, but never feel the need to do exactly what somebody else does. And if I ever come close that I am aware of to someone else's project, if there's a copy of something that I've not seen and I'm not aware of, then obviously I can't give credit to that person. But if I see something like on Pinterest, then I will give credit to where that idea originally came from. It's just the right thing to do. To give people credit for their creativity. So I needed a little bit of greenery on here naturally. I'm gonna take the Dollar Tree pick and cut those leaves apart. And because the bow is bulky, I don't want a lot of bulk here, so I want this to be kind of flat. The idea of this project is to be simple, but festive. So that's all glued into place. The back looks terrible. You can cover that. You could have always painted that back side, or you could cover it with some brown crafting paper if you would like. This is going to be flat on the wall, so no one will see the back of this. And at some point, it may be repurposed to another project. Just taking a loop of chenille stem and making a hanger on the back, making sure that it doesn't go over the top of the edge of my sign. A little hot glue and then a piece of scrap cardboard paper to hold that in place. I want to fluff up that bow and make sure that it is looking nice and spry. And I decided that because those berries originally, the uh, dark red berries, they didn't really show up against the dark green. So I decided to just take another pick that I got from Dollar Tree and just cut those berries off and put them there. And I think that is a much better option. It also matches better with the straw on the top 
of the mason jar. So what do you think? This is a complete project. It didn't take long to do this at all. It's simple and expensive. And it's exactly how I wanted it to be. Thanks for stopping by my channel and watching my videos. I appreciate all the support as usual. If you like budget-friendly decor and DIYs, consider subscribing to the channel. And comment below if you have any requests for Christmas crafting that I might could consider doing for a future video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye. Today we're making a double loop wreath. Keep watching. We're going to start off with a variety of items. Some we may use, some we might not. Some thrifted ornaments, some from Walmart. These came from Dollar Tree. This was thrifted. And these are two hoop wreaths that I already had. They're embroidery hoops in two different sizes. And they have been wrapped with yarn, but you can use nautical rope or a thick jute type twine if you would like. And I'm just going to do a quick repair on mine where I had some loose threads, a little hot glue to put that down. These are wooden underneath. So I'm going to be attaching the smaller wreath on the inside of the larger wreath to one side and I'm going to use these zip ties to hold those together. Be sure to trim off those extra pieces, the extra length that you don't use. You don't want to get these too tight because it will start to press into your rope or your yarn that you have around there. Now I'm just going to go ahead and secure this with some more of this thrifted yarn that I have. I've had this one spool of yarn for a couple years and I've gotten so many projects out of it. I have no idea where it came from, but you can get something similar at Dollar Tree. Um, as far as rope, lengths of rope, you can go to some, like a hobby craft store or something like that to get big spools of yarn. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap down on that side to give it a nicer look and to cover up all the hardware from those wreaths, those little um, tightening screws. Now they're all covered up very neatly. So this is like a press board or I don't know if it's called MDF snowflake. And here's my son. When I turned my back to get some other stuff, my son came over here and started to do a little video of his own. Thought I'd leave that in there for you to show you how I got so much help. <laughs> Thanks, Noah. Okay, now Mama's back in the driver's seat. So I've taken these picks that I've, I've had for a little while. I think I got these last year on clearance after Christmas at Hobby Lobby. Or they might have been thrifted. Not, can't quite remember. So I know that I want to use a semicircle of these. And this is sort of how I would like for them to lay. You can use greenery wire and go ahead and wire that down if you want to. But because that green floor wire is going to show up, I don't want that on my white wreath. I want it to be a cleaner look. So I've decided to just go ahead and use this floral tape that I have. To secure these pieces together. Floral tape, if you're not familiar with it, it does not feel very sticky. It's a waxed piece and it's it doesn't really feel ticky, <laughs> sticky or tacky until you pull on it a little bit and when you start to pull and put some pressure on it, the tackiness comes in then and then you can you can feel that it is holding those items together.
you can get this in lots of different colors. I do have it in two other shades of green also. And you can also get this at Dollar Tree. But it's fairly inexpensive wherever you decide to get it. It's coming together pretty nicely here. And I had some wire showing. I want to cover that up by just putting a little pressure on that and twisting it to the end. Cleaned it up a bit. Now rather than using bulky zip ties here, I've decided to use some pieces of the leftover yarn that I have that I've just pulled into, into little threads, into smaller sections. And you're just going to find little places here and there that you can attach your greenery to that outer hoop. It's pretty easy to do. Um, you can also use jute cord or a thinner white yarn if you're using white just so that it's kind of camouflaged. It's just a nicer, like I've said it, you know, before, it's just a cleaner, nicer, more finished look. Snowflake fits pretty nicely here. It wouldn't go all the way down on the inside, so I've decided I'm going to use a pipe cleaner to attach it on the two sides there. I'm going to use some hot glue, a piece of pipe cleaner, and then a little piece of scrap paper on top of that. And we'll do the same thing on this side. I'm going to use a longer piece for this side so that it will wrap all the way around that thicker section there. Then when you twist it around it's it's barely noticeable because the color matches pretty well. So now it's secured down. And I'm going to start adding my mini ornaments from Walmart. I'm putting these down to see where I would like for them to be. Then with a little hot glue, I'm just going to put it on the back of the, the sphere itself and place it down into the greenery. Now using this thrifted white ribbon, just a thin ribbon, I'm going to make little, simple little shoestring bows to put on the tops of each one of those ornaments. Just going to trim those down. You can leave them as long as you want. You could use a different color. My ornaments are black and white. You could use black. You could use a tiny little checkered ribbon if you wanted, or, or you could use blue because the berries are blue. Whatever you choose is fine right here. It's really simple little easy bows to make. I'm going to add a little hot glue. Be careful on this metal piece because it can get very hot. Just tap that into place. And I'll do that for the other two as well. Alright, so I'm going to use this metal joy sign that came from Dollar Tree in a three pack. I'm going to take it outside and spray it down with this glossy black paint. And while that is drying, I'm going to start all my ribbon pieces. I'm cutting about five inch pieces here of a denim blue and this black and white. You use whatever you like here. I do recommend one print and one solid color just to keep this from being too busy because we want this to have a simple look. Now I'm dovetailing those. You can do them one at a time or you can fold them together like this. Just be sure that you've lined up your wires there so you don't have a bunch of square ends. So I'm going to pinch it in the middle. I'm going to show you this stack first, then we pinch it in the middle. Might make it a little bit easier for you to see it like this. 
or you can do one at a time and just hold them in your hand. So I'm taking another piece of that string that came from the yarn, just a little braid pieces. And I'm going to tie a double knot here. This is some pretty sturdy yarn, but be careful depending on what kind you have. It may break. Just going to fluff that bow out a little bit. And then we're going to work on a few other little pieces that will go inside of the greenery. We're going to pinch it in the middle and then pull it upward so that it has this shape. So you can see here. Kind of keeping the bottom kind of flat and then pressing the top upward and toward the center and this is the shape that you get we're going to do that with the blue as well take a little tiny piece of a twist tie or a pipe cleaner and that will keep that in that shape for you if you have a stiffer um, wired ribbon, it may it may hold its form for you better without even having to put a piece of wire or anything on it. So here we are doing the same thing with the blue. And then we're going to stack them. Like this. That's how that will look. We'll do it for the other one. I wanted to use the blue because there are blueberries. And then of course the black and white. It matches the black and white ornaments and the wreath itself. Okay, so I did not like the way that that end was looking. I'm just going to wrap a little piece around here and you won't really be able to see it once that is done. And I put the bow on the top of it. You won't really notice it. So I've hot glued the bow down and now I'm just pulling at the bow to decide what pieces I want to go wear. And this part really doesn't matter. You just do what you like the best, what makes sense to you, and what is pleasing to your eye. This is your project. We want it to be what you enjoy and what brings you joy. So those have been glued together and now we're just going to put them down here and there on the wreath. I'm going to take some of these mini pine cones that are frosted. They also came from Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to randomly place them here and there for a more woodland look. Just fills out the wreath a little bit better. I think this would be really pretty to use all winter long if you'd like. And there is Joy all painted. I'm going to use some Gorilla Glue. And this time on this project, I won't use quite as much glue as I used in my in my farmhouse Dollar Tree sign video. Use a little too much, but I fix it. <laughs> so this is going to be better. What brings you joy in your life? It's a good question, isn't it? You guys bring me joy. Thanks for stopping by. And I'll see you again real soon. Bye. Today we're making the reversible winter sign. Keep watching. So you remember this sign. There you go. 
So I've got a video on that and I'll be sure to put it in the card up above so you can watch that when you're finished with this one. We're going to work on the opposite side now and I've decided to use the other half of this bag that came from Dollar Tree. I made a big sign with the other side. So now I'm going to use this piece. I've just went ahead and folded it down to get an idea of where it would fit. And then I am just going to cut that out. Yeah, I made a little boo-boo there with my cutting. My line is not perfectly straight. That's okay because I can trim that a little bit and fix it. And anytime you make an error when you're cutting, uh, you can always just use something to trim it out. I'm going to cut off that top folded area. And there we go. I think this is how I want to have it in here. I don't know why the paper was so thin on that edge, but you'll see it just kind of comes off by itself. Must have been right near that fold in the bag, the original fold. So I'm going to try to fix where I made my little boo-boo there, make it a little bit straighter. That's easy enough. It's a good fit. So I'm going to take my glue stick and put this down. I'm not using a ton of glue on here because I have found that, you know, a fairly even coverage is going to give you the hold that you need. So that's all I'm going to do here. And you can use dots of hot glue in the corners if you want to, or you know, whatever you choose to use. Quality of this paper on the of the bag is really nice. It's uh, thicker than regular paper and little. It's thinner than cardstock though, but it's it's good. It's easy to smooth. It's pretty easy to work with. Now I'm going to give you some options in this video. You can trim this out with some jute cord if you would like. Any type of the decorative Christmas trim or whatever color you like since this isn't necessarily screaming Christmas. It's pretty much just a winter sign. But I've chosen to use this berry garland. You can get this at Dollar Tree as well. It comes in a few pieces. I originally thought it was two pieces, but if you look closely on the end, you can actually get four shorter pieces out of this without having to cut it. They're just twisted together nicely. If you want to double it up, you don't have to untwist it. You could just go ahead and string it along and put it around your edges. So I went ahead and decided where I want my pieces to go and because it's wired you can just easily bend it before you start gluing it to most likely decrease your odds of the glue drying too quickly and of you burning yourself. So I'm going to grab my little spatula here. This came from Hobby Lobby. But you can get any type of spatula you want or you could use the glue fingertips but because this is a tight area that I'm trying to get into I think that this flat thin edge works better, you know, to place it where I want to put it. With these little pit berries, they do, they're kind of movable, so you can fix those where you're not gluing on top of them so that they're, they're um, on the outward surface where you want them to be, and that way your wire will lay flat. You can just push them around with your fingers or with your spatula, whichever way you want to do it. They also have this trim in gold and in a white color. And I think at different seasons, you know, they have a darker red and they have orange and things like that. But I hope they keep this for all the seasons because this, it really is nice. And it's easy to work with. Gives it a little extra something, especially if you're into rustic or farmhouse or a woodland theme. Just go ahead and finish trimming that out. And then if you have any glue that seeps out, you can just pull those pieces off. I'm forever pulling off glue string spider webs. And if you didn't watch the other video, which you really should, 
if you didn't watch that video, I got this particular sign as a fall decoration from Big Lots a few years ago. And I got it on clearance after the holidays. I didn't really care for the style of it. So I went ahead and painted one side with chalkboard paint. And that's the sign that's already decorated. And then I took some, I think it's called Navajo um, paint to put on this side. Of course, I could have just not put anything on this side since I'm putting a bag on top of it. But I did because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it, but I knew that I wanted to use it. And a shout out to the maker of these bags. These designs are gorgeous. They really are just beautiful. These are the little sticker packs that you can get from Dollar Tree. You're just going to pull, pull the little foam sticky piece off of there and use a little hot glue. And I want to put some here in the corners. I think the snowflake is appropriate considering this is a snowy scene. And if we want this to be a winter sign, it looks nice. I've chosen to leave it the natural color that, uh, as it came rather than painting it. But you could always paint yours white if you'd like. I'm going to put a jute bow on the top of mine. So I'm taking about probably 14 inches here and I'm going to cut four equal pieces. You can use more, you can use less, depending on the thickness of the bow that you like. Then I'm going to do a simple shoestring bow. Two rabbit ears, cross them over. And there you go. You can make the tails as long as you want, so you can go ahead and adjust your bow, the length of the ears. And that's what I'm doing here. Cute is pretty forgiving. And then just choose which, which area you want to place your bow. So I could do it at the top, I could do it somewhere on the bottom. These are just options that I left in for you so you can decide how to make it your own. You could actually use a piece of garland and make a wreath if you would like. Do something like that. These are snowflake ornaments that came from Dollar Tree. I've had these for years. I usually put them in my Christmas tree. So there's a good look too. If you choose, you can embellish the center of that wreath. And I have a magnet that's going to be perfect right there in the middle. This magnet came from Hobby Lobby, I do believe. And I'm just going to peel that off. I started to pull it off with my pliers and it broke the corner. And I realized that it could easily just be peeled off with a little force by hand. So I went ahead and pulled it off. And look at the tag for the tailgate of my beautiful little 1956 Ford. I don't really know what year it is or if it's a Ford, but that's what I'm going to call it. I was in Cracker Barrel the other day, clearance shopping, and I saw a model truck there that's a 1956 Ford. Or maybe a Chevy. I'm not sure. What do, what do you think? What is this? What is this truck? If you had to do a year in a model, what do you think? I just think it's gorgeous, whatever it is. And it's vintage looking and it is very rustic and farmhousey. All right, so we're gonna have some options here for greenery. If you wanna add anything to embellish the bottom, you could also just use stickers and put some words down there or you could freehand something down there if you want to. But we're gonna put something in the road behind the tree to give it a little dimension. And these little bottle brush trees you can get. I'm not sure where this one came from, but most likely the Dollar Tree. It's been in my crafting supply for a while, so I can't tell you for sure since it was out of the package, but you can definitely get them there. And this has little flecks of white in it, so I thought it was appropriate. In order to get this to lay flat against the sign, I am just taking the bristles down almost to the stem on one side. Then I'm going to add a good amount of glue there and just hold him down because the bristles have a tendency to press it back up from the surface. So just hold it there for a minute, let it get some grip before you let go of it. 
and there we are. Now you can just add some bits and pieces. This is from a, I think a cedar or a fern pick. I think it's cedar. And it's frosted, so I'm just going to add some of that along the bottom with some hot glue. And then I'm going to take another little piece that came off of some thrifted greenery. And it is also frosted. And decide where I want to put him. He's more like a pencil tree. I think he'll go great in this corner. And again, it tries to push away from the surface, so just be sure you secure it down before you do anything else with it. What do you think so far? It's good? Would you leave it like this? I wanted to add a little more dimension here to really make that a more like a 3D look. So I've decided to take some more of that jute twine that we use for our bow and a dot of glue to secure it around the corner of that. I guess you could call it a magnet. That's what it was originally, but our sign. And I'm just gonna wrap that and secure it in the corner here. And then take that around one more time. Give it a second to dry and then go ahead and clip that off. And there we go. What do you think? Isn't this a great option to have on the other side of that sign? Now you've got a beautiful scenery on both sides of that sign. Thanks for coming back and watching this video. Welcome to all my newcomers. I'm going to see you guys again soon. Bye. Today we'll make a rustic Christmas stocking. Keep watching. These are a bunch of items that we might be using. So you can use any type of ornaments from the Dollar Tree or from Walmart. They have some little minis here. Gonna use possibly this coaster. It's just an idea of a sign. These came from Dollar Tree in the floral section, I believe. We have an assortment of ribbons that we could use. These are wired ribbons. They came from Dollar General and Dollar Tree. And then here is my thrifted stocking, which came from Hobby Lobby. It originally came from Hobby Lobby, but I got it at Goodwill. This is an old pillow that I've used for stuffing on a couple of projects, and I'm going to use it for this. Take the tag off of your stocking. If it is new, if it is not, then you are good to go. This stocking has fur trim, and it is so cute. I'm just going to fluff it up a little bit. Then we got to stuff this stocking. So we're going to take the inside of the pillow, tear it apart, pull it apart, kind of fluff it up a little bit, and then we're going to begin fluffing up this stocking because we want it to look full. Nobody wants an empty, empty stocking at Christmas, right? So we're going to fluff it up. You can use, if you have paper towels, you could use that. You could use Walmart or Dollar Tree bags. You could use an old newspaper. Just crumple it up and stuff it down in the stocking. Be sure that you get the toe and then work your way up the leg of the stocking. And once I get it all fluffed up, I want to make sure that it's kind of even and there's no, no lumpiness. So I'm just kind of patting it down and getting it straight. This is a foam block that I'm just going to stuff in the top to make sure that it fits because we're going to do an arrangement with this. This is a little truck with a Christmas tree in it. This is an ornament pack that came from Dollar Tree. And then these are some acrylic markers that I got off of Amazon. I'll try to get that link for you and put that in the description box. You can color your truck with Ever color you like. Uh, like a dark green would be really pretty. I've seen black trucks. You could use a blue. Heck, you could use white or pink or whatever color matches your stocking. But it's Christmas and I want to use the red on this truck. 
I'm just going to fill this in. Of course, if you don't have acrylic markers, you can use chalk paint and a brush. You know, kind of a small brush that's easy control. Or you could use acrylic paints on here. If you wanted to do that, you could. You could probably do watercolors too, but you wouldn't have the coverage that you get with a paint, a paint marker. I got two packs. They came as one set. It's the bullet tip, which I'm using now for these bigger areas. And then there are some fine tip uh, markers as well. When you get these, you have to shake them up and then press them down until the paint comes down into the tip of the marker. But then you're good to go. Every now and then they'll get a little bit streaky and all you got to do is just press them down or draw on the paper, which you saw me do on the side there, and it'll get the flow going again. But I'm happy with them. They didn't cost a lot of money. So that's always a good thing because you know I'm, I'm frugal. I'm also going to use the black here to line out the bed of the truck, that rail there. But you could use a dark brown if you wanted. That would be good. I think that would work. Okay, then I'm going to take the green and I'm going to start coloring in that tree. We're going to give it some shading or we're going to give it some snow in just a moment. And it's really going to make a difference in this little ornament. It's going to kind of bring it to life. I decided to leave this part in because I know a lot of people like to see painting and, and drawing. They like to watch. So, okay, here we go. You're going to take your white and just go over it with little dots and little streaks on the high points where you would normally have snow collect. If you live in the south, you may have no, no clue whatsoever. But I think the high areas are where you're going to see this. I'm using my white fine tip marker for this okay so my tree is going to dry and I'm going to take this floral pick this one that I had removed the um, floral pieces from already and I started off using one of those little twine or whatever balls but I do take those off so you won't see me use those again but these are some white ornaments that came out of the multi-packs of ornaments from the Dollar Tree last year. And they do have them this year. They look like little snowballs. So I thought they would be good in this, in this rustic arrangement. Just going to take a few. And my block is used to just hold those in place until my glue dries. Then you can take them up and put them aside because it'll be cut off in a moment. I took a snowy floral pick, and I believe this is one that I got on clearance last year at either Michael's or Hobby Lobby. It's just a pine pick. And where I live, we do have pine trees. Now I live in Southern Alabama, so obviously we don't have the snow, but would you believe it? A couple of years ago, we had snow two years in a row. I was so shocked. It was a fluke, I know, but you know. It was a blessing to us because it was nice to see it. It's rare for my kids to get to play in snow. So it was really great. So I've cut these off of the pick and I'm just using those to stick here and there in my floral foam. And now I've got to have some way to stick my ornament in there. So I'm just taking another stem that I had left and some hot glue. Gluing that down on the back side of that truck and letting it set up while I continue to work on my full arrangement. Um, I think these were some picks that I got on clearance last year from Hobby Lobby. They are completely flocked and I, I really like these pieces. I didn't get very many of them though. So I'm going to use them kind of sparingly. Now I know that the smallest part of this is going to be the, the block there that's going to go on the inside of the arrangement. So I want my 
arrangement to sort of fan out. So that's why you see me going kind of wide and short on the sides. Now I'm going to show you how to take a pine cone and wire it. You just cut a length of floral wire, find a bottom section that has a gap in it, and you just wrap it around there. That's all you got to do, and then twist it closed. I'm going to borrow another pick from another floral pick, and then I'm just going to wrap that wire around the pick. And now I have something sturdy to stick this down into that, that block. If it's still a little bit too loose for your liking, put a dot of hot glue on there and it'll stay where you want it to stay. So I'm going to cut this pick a little bit shorter and put it a little more towards the front and a little bit lower down. I have almost a triangle formation with that and also with those little snowballs. And now these beautiful picks, I definitely should have got more of because I cannot find them now. These are like, I think they're willow picks and they came from the Dollar Tree. These things really give a very nice woodland look to your projects. They're really nice. Be sure that you're also decorating some on the back side. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to have a little something back there to fill it out. And feel free to bend some of your picks. Do you see how this is almost like it's fanned out on the top? And then there is my little tree. I'm gonna put him in there. And see how I like him placed. Do I want to put him behind the sticks or in front of them? And I think it looks better kind of taking center stage there. So I'm just gonna take this. I'm gonna place it back down on the inside. Now I will tell you, once I get it put back up, I take right there above the rim, I take some of that fake snow cloth and I put it down in there to cover it up and, and make it look like it's sitting in the snow. I just don't have footage of that. Go back through, add picks, add florals, whatever you want in there to just fill it out and give it the look that you like. And I really love this. This is pretty. This is a really simple arrangement. This would make a beautiful gift. It's a beautiful piece of decor. And I just, I love it. It was simple. It didn't take me long to make. And I hope that you do this. Dollar Tree's got some great stockings right now. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Today we're making some cheerful Christmas decor. Keep watching. We're going to start off with this little box sign that I got at Dirt Cheap. It's a little mangled. We're going to use some Rust-Oleum chalk linen white paint to cover it. And here's a brush that I got from Dollar Tree. And then some wrapping paper that came from Target. So we're going to start by peeling off as much of this paper as we can. Got it down as smooth as I could get it, and I'm gonna go in here with some chalk paint and cover this. I did lay it on pretty thickly, and then I let it dry, and then put another coat on top of that. And I just put it in front of the fan and let the fan blow on it for a little while, and that helped dry it pretty nicely. So once it's dried with the second layer of paint it, it looks pretty good. I'm just going to take this wrapping paper and I'm going to trace with a pencil around the edge of the box. It's easy if you use a pencil to go ahead and erase that off of your white paint if you accidentally bump it when you're tracing. So I'm going to cut out this square or this rectangle and it doesn't have to be exact because once I put it down I'm going to sand it off. So now we know that it's going to give us full coverage. And it was important to do the white paint because the paper is a little on the sheer side. It's not very thick. Alright, I'm using just a glue stick here. You can use any type of glue stick you want. I 
believe uh, they all pretty much work the same in my experience. Be sure that you get all the way to the edges and the corners because you do not want your paper to peel off. Glue sticks work well because they don't leave bubbles and messes and you don't drip it everywhere. You don't have to get out an extra brush to do it. So since I started using glue sticks and double stick tape, it has saved me a lot of cleanup time. Now just put this down here and make sure that you are getting it centered, reasonably centered, and then you want to smooth it out. I'm using my wooden ruler that I got from Dollar Tree and just going to give it a few swipes just to make sure it's nice and smooth. Then I'm just kind of pressing down on the edges there. That doesn't really matter all that much, but I just wanted to be sure that the glue was making contact with the paper so that I got a nice smooth surface with no peeling. And I have chosen this little ornament to use as my embellishment. You can use any type that you want really, it doesn't matter. Whatever works, whatever fits on top of your wooden box and coordinates with the paper that you choose. Now I want this to be raised up a little more off the surface, so I'm going to use these little wood block pieces that came from Dollar Tree in the Crafters Square and just give it a few little, few little dots. And while that glue is sitting up, I'm going to take my block sander and just begin to remove the excess paper off the edges. You've seen me do this before. And if you've tried it and you love it as much as I do, please let me know in the comments because I love this. I look forward to doing this when I am doing my paper crafts. Kind of crazy, huh? I'm telling you, it's a joy in the little things. Now that we've got that down, I'm gonna take a little this checkered ribbon, make a little simple bow. It's a shoelace bow, I think is what it's called. I'll get it. I'll get the name for you one of these days. Very easy to tie. And I'm going to check my placement and then go ahead and dovetail those ends or chevron or whatever you whatever terminology that you want to use. Up the bow a little bit and decide where I want to place it. So rather than putting it on top, I want to put it behind here and I'm going to add some greenery. The little pick came from Target, but I got it from Dollar Tree. And the ribbon is actually, I think originally from Hobby Lobby, but I got it at a thrift store. So I'm going to put a bit of glue down and make sure that this pick sticks in that. Put the bow on top and I'm just going to use my ruler to keep from burning myself because my fingertips were not in reach, my little finger protectors. I'm going to press that down for a moment. And these berries are on wires, so I'm just pulling those up a little bit. Get them some dimension. I don't want anything to be laying flat. And now I'm going to put down the ornament just going to put some glue on the blocks that are in the back. Carefully put that back down where I had planned for it to go. Now there's a lot of red going on up there so I want to break it up a little bit and you can see there on the bottom left I have some white picks. Those also came from Dollar Tree a few years ago and I'm going to just put a little bit of that right in that loop. And because it's a rectangle box, it will sit up and you can use it sitting up on your bar or your desk or wherever you like. Do you like this? I think it's cute. It's easy to make. Thanks for watching. I surely hope that you subscribe. Got lots more Christmas things coming. And I'll see you again real soon. Bye. Today we're making this sparkly jingle bell piece of Christmas decor. Keep watching.
we're going to start off with this box that I already had around my house, so it was free for me. It's just a little wooden box. It's pretty shallow. I'm going to get those measurements here for you. It's more of a rectangle than a square. I'm going to take a bag of your choice, as long as it's going to fit in the box that you choose to use. And this one came from Dollar General, I believe. I've had it for a few years in my Christmas decoration and wrapping box. I'm going to cut out the front side of this. One side of this bag is sparkly and iridescent and the other side is plain, so we're going to use the sparkly side. Just going to put my box down there and make some marks where I'm going to be cutting. Be sure that you trim that up inside of those lines so that it will fit down in your box. But don't worry if it's a little bit larger than you want because you can trim it down a little at a time until you get it the size that you want it. So I'm considering some trim here and I'm going to give you some options. This piece of beaded garland or wire came from Dollar Tree. You could use this for a more farmhouse look. This is some jute cord that came from Dollar Tree. And this is some decorative ribbon or cording that came from the Christmas section of Dollar Tree. This, I think, gives it a, a nice vintage look. Now you're going to use a couple of dots of hot glue to put down your bag inside of the box if you want to use it again. Or for something more permanent, you could use a glue stick or some Mod Podge. Just pressing that down to make sure it stays in and that there are no lumps and bumps under there. I've got my handy dandy finger protectors on and I'm going to run a bead of hot glue down the side there. I like my seams to be in the corners, but you can put yours wherever you like. And I'm going to layer this with jute on the bottom, and then I'm going to use some of that sparkly cord on the top, because I like the kind of a frosty or icicle look that it's going to give this piece. Reminds me of some old-fashioned Christmas decorations with the tinsel and the garland. So just continue along. You want to focus your glue line right in the corner so that you can snug that piece of jute right into the corner because we're going to put another piece on top. This cord is thicker than the jute and it's going to sit sort of on top of that. So we're going to use the same process. I'm going to start on the bottom, but this time in the other corner so it doesn't get too bulky. I'm going to run some glue down there. And press it against the box and the other piece of cord. You know, if you wanted to, you could probably use like a decorative box top and make a piece of decor out of that. This is just what I had, and it's really thin. It's a very, very lightweight box. And this way I get two uses out of it because I can use the top of the box for another sign later on. Just to give it a little extra sparkle, I've decided to run this along the inside border too. Gives it a finished look. I've done this before with jute, but I'm going to do it with this decorative cord this time. You can just take your little spatula or stick, whatever you have, and just press it into the side and into the corners. Try to get that glue as close as you can to the corner so you don't make a mess. It's just going to give you a nice, it's going to give you a nice clean look.
Dollar Tree also has some that I think it's like a red and green and gold cord. I have some of that too, but it didn't match with this particular piece. Once you get it close to the corner, go ahead and trim it. You don't have to trim it completely short. You just go back in there and fix whatever's left that needs to be re removed. And glue that down, just like that. This little spatula came from a set that I got at Hobby Lobby this fall. And I have some Jingle Bells that were already in my stash from a few years. They were actually not in my crafting uh, supplies they were with my Christmas decor. I'm going to use a piece of this jute and just push it through the ends and put three bells together. If your jute is coming unwound you can use a little candle wax on it or a little bit of hot glue to dab on the end and twist it to make it into a little point so that you can thread it. You could also use a piece of clear tape. I'm going to just tie a couple of knots in there to secure it. And now I'm going to work on a stand. Now this is square and it would stand by itself, but it's so lightweight that any type of wind or vibrations will probably knock it over. And I have a house that is raised. It's not on concrete. So walking around on the floor could knock this over. So I've decided to take these little wood blocks that came from the crafter section in Dollar Tree and make a little stand for the box. It gives it a little extra support so it's not easily knocked over. You could probably use those little Jenga type building blocks if you wanted. Okay, so since I've already got the stand on here, I went ahead and propped this up on a roll of ribbon just to give it a little support while I work. A couple of more knots to give it more surface there. And I went ahead and trimmed that off. Now I'm going to make some bows to go in the corner because you will see these cute little bows on a lot of the old Christmas decorations and I wanted to give it some more sparkle so just a real easy bow that I made there and I'm trying to get an idea of where I might want to place my jingle bells so here are a few options for you you could also take some of those little bottle brush trees if you wanted to like in white and put those there on the base that would be super cute with this I think so one more bow and I'm going to use the jute for this I'm going to put it underneath and then pull those ears out so that they're the same size and I like the look of that layered bow a little glue in the corner is going to hold that down just hold it for a moment until it's stable then I'm going to put my bells in the corner so we we'll put the hot glue on there and just press it up into the corner and hold it for just a minute. And I have my cute little jingle bell sign. You can top this off with some of these metal signs from Dollar Tree. They come in these three packs. I think it's peace, joy, and something else. So that just will give you an idea of how something like that would look. But I think I'm going to leave it like this. I like that it's a little on the simpler side and it's somewhere between maybe a vintage look and a farmhouse look. Also maybe a little rustic and possibly glam since it's sparkly. I think it would work in a lot of different types of decor. What do you think? You can see the iridescence there and it just looks like pretty snow and I love it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you come back to see me. If you're not subscribed, I hope you hit that subscribe button, and give me a thumbs up if you've been enjoying these Christmas videos. I'll see you again soon. Bye. Can you believe we're making these projects from gift bags and gift boxes from Dollar Tree? Keep watching.
Okay, DIY number one is going to be made with a Dollar Tree gift bag. They have a gorgeous variety of red truck and rustic looking bags for you to choose from. So you're going to pick some ribbons, you're going to choose your bag. And then my sign here is something that I got from Dirt Cheap. I paid a dollar for it. Can you believe it? A dollar. I'm going to use my yardstick and show you that this is a 16 inch square. So you're going to need something about that size to put your bag on. All right, these handles will just feed back through. They have a little plasticky thing on them. We're going to repurpose one of those handles, so you want to keep that for later. And also use that little tag for something else. I'm cutting off a plastic hanger, and then I'm going to begin cutting out my picture. Guys, it's the little red truck. Uh-huh. Look at that. The color is gorgeous. There's no glitter on this bag. Gonna take the little extra piece off up there. We're not going to need that. And then I'm going to measure and trim out where I need to cut it. Just using a pencil. Take off the edges. We want this to fit from side to side. There is going to be room on the top and the bottom, and that is all right with me because I have a solution for that. I got a pile of these beautiful bags. They're different. Oh, they're so pretty. I'm gonna be doing more projects with these, so thumbs up and comment below if you would like to see more projects done with these bags. You're not gonna believe how this, this turns out. I'm going to take a ribbon that has no wire, put it across the top edge and the bottom edge. Instead of having a frayed edge poking out there, I've made it long enough so that it will overlap and we can put it on the back side. By the way, this picture, I have one with the tree side, just like this, hanging in my bedroom. I think I got four of these. So lots of options, especially for the price. You cannot be price. I mean, a dollar. Yeah. I think the board originally came from Target. It did. But I got it at dirt cheap. Now using the glue stick, which is a clean option, which was getting a little chunky on me there, wanted to show you. Not a problem, we're just going to press it down and keep moving. Be sure that you get all the way out to the edges so that you don't have any peeling once you get your project down on your Press it down, you don't want any air under there. And I'm using my wooden ruler to make sure that it is pressed all the way down. Now the holes at the top where the handles were, we're just gonna take a white metallic marker or a blue, or a, <laughs> a chalk marker, there we go. And you're just gonna fill in those little holes. I'm using my sanding block from Dollar Tree and taking the edges off. This gives it a nice smooth edge and finish. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And I didn't wait until the glue was dry. I went right ahead and did this. Excuse my Halloween shirt. I'm doing these videos a little early for you guys so you can get everything you need to make these before the items disappear from the store. Because if you shop Dollar Tree, you know how it goes. You better get it while it's there. Okay, so just in case I've knocked anything loose with all that, I went ahead and pressed it back down. I'm going to take another piece of ribbon 
to put over the edge and this is one of those lace ribbons. This is not in the holiday sections, it's in the regular crafting section. And the green and white polka dot ribbon was actually thrifted. Would you use anything you like? I think Dollar Tree has a red plaid ribbon that might be pretty for this as well. And you don't have to have a wired ribbon, but you certainly can use one. I'm going to center this between the ribbon and the border of the picture and just use a couple of little dots of hot glue to put it down, leaving those ends a little bit long so that I can wrap them around the back for a nice clean finish. Same thing on the bottom. This ribbon has a slight curve. Um, I don't know if all of them do or if it was just the, the spool that I picked, but it does have a slight curve, but that's not a problem. It's cotton and you can just manipulate it down into the position that you need it to be in. Trim off any extra that you have. Now it's time for my wooden stickers. And they do have a little plastic on the back that you peel off before you put them down. When I bought these, I saw that there was a chip piece here. It was still hanging on by the fibers of the wood. I went ahead and tried to patch that with a chalk marker. And it did help with the little disruption in the color there but I do go black, back and hot glue it. Now you gotta find the positioning here where you want your letters to be. This pack came from Target last year and I got it from Dirt Cheap. You can use any type of sticker that you want to use. Since this is kind of a large sign though, you are going to need um, larger letters just to balance it. If you're good with hand lettering or painting, you can certainly do that here. So I didn't measure out to get the exact center of this because that's really not something that I wanted to do this time. I'm just kind of eyeballing it and putting it down. And the ribbon there on the bottom does give me a little wiggle room. I can. I can see my line there, so it's fairly straight. It's just probably not centered in the board, but that's okay. I like it anyway. All right. And you got more of the same here. Those were the easy pieces. Now time for the little, a bit more complicated to get these pieces down, but that is not a problem. I would never ever be um, comfortable enough to just peel those off and stick them down randomly. I just, there's no way. But if you put them down on there first, you can get an idea of where you want them to be. So I call this a dry run. Kind of see how I want them spaced and then get them where I want them to be. So that's what you see here. So these little wood stickers also have the same adhesive on the back, little sticker backing. I'm just going to peel them off and try to put them back in the same spot that I found them. Luckily, one of those bag handle holes was covered by the welcome sign. But I couldn't quite get it spaced where it would cover up the second one. But it's no big deal. We don't sweat the small stuff here, do we? And again, don't worry if you don't have the stickers. Use whatever stickers you have. 
I think it's pretty with the different fonts though. I really like that, how that turned out. Okay, so you see where it's broken on the bottom? I'm just gonna use a little bit of hot glue and just patch it. Not a problem, I'm not gonna stress. I'm not gonna throw it away and start over. Nope, I'm gonna use a little stick, put a dot of glue on it, and I'm going to patch it up. And hold it in place for a moment until it is set up like it should be. There you have it. Guys, this was made from a bag. A bag. A Dollar Tree bag. Is this not the most super high-end looking sign of a red truck that you have ever seen? I'm telling you, you could definitely go to Hobby Lobby and spend possibly $39, $40 on a sign this size with this much detail going on in it. We did it for just a few dollars. Yep, we sure did. We sure did. So we need to hang this thing. I'm gonna use the handle that was already on the bag. And I am going to use this tag. Cut this down. This is going to be the paper that I use to patch over where I put my glue. Gluing it down. And the paper on top of the glue just secures it down so that it, nothing, nothing moves. Everything stays right where it needs to be. We're gonna do the same thing on the side. I know that it's not level on the back, but it will hang fine. There you go. Just cleaning up my little glue that's squished out. Now on to DIY number two, which is the Dollar Tree gift box. They have lots of these too. This was in a three pack. This is probably medium size. So we're going to deck the halls with this and this thrifted frame. We're going to take it apart, give that glass a good cleaning with some alcohol, let it dry, take the paper back off of the frame and set it aside. We're going to take this Rust-Oleum Universal Satin Apple Red Paint. Take this frame outside, spray it with two coats and let it dry. All right, my glass is clean. I'm gonna lay it on top of the box and get the sizing right for my framed artwork. So there we, we got the edges there. Carefully cut this out so that you can save the edging for a different project. We're crafters, we just don't throw stuff away. Not like normal people do, right? We're going to save it. The edging doesn't have to be exactly perfect on this. It's going to be in a frame, so you won't see if you have little jags here and there. All right, so this is what I mean. This is the trim that I had off of the boxes. Look at all that extra stuff you could use on other projects. Set that aside, we might need it for another project at another point. So our frame is dry and we've brought it back in. I'm gonna put some glue on the paper backing of the frame and we're gonna just reassemble it. Gonna put the glass back in and then we're going to lay the picture that we cut from the box right down in there and secure it with those tabs. And we have a standing piece of art that is framed. Isn't that nice? I love the way the red frame looks with the red poinsettias. Thanks so much for stopping by and watching my video and crafting with me. I hope you come back and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Here's another project with Dollar Tree tags. Keep watching.
We're going to start off with two of these Dollar Tree ornaments. Cute as they are, but we're going to fix them up a little bit. So I want to change these from kind of a more of a Christmas theme into a winter theme. Something that's going to last us until spring. You can use scrap paper. You can use decorative paper. You can use any types of bells and tiny ornaments that you have. You can use twine, ribbon. I'm going to use wrapping paper that I already have to cover these. We're going to start by just untying this ribbon. We can put it aside and use it again on something else. You know how these are. Sometimes the paper comes off easily. Sometimes not so much. So you get a good example of both in this video. Don't worry if you're stuck with something like this because it can be fixed. Just grab some sanding paper instead of my block, which is a finder grit. I've decided to use this little bit rougher sandpaper. Make sure that you get all the glitter off and that you try to get your surface relatively smooth to the surface that's under it. Wipe off all the residue. Now to decide what we want to do with our two ornaments, how we want to make them. We'll go start with this one and we're going to cover it with this wrapping paper. I think this wrapping paper came from Dollar Tree. I could be wrong. It may be something that I got at Dirt Cheap. I'm going to just roughly draw a little trim here. You don't have to cut it close and I intentionally did this a little bit messy and larger than needed and then cut it out kind of sloppy to show you that that won't make a bit of difference once we get it applied. So just bend your paper against the way that it wants to roll and it'll flatten out for you a little bit. Now that we have a smooth surface on our tag, we're going to take a glue stick. You don't have to use name brand, it's just what I had nearby. You can use the Jot or any type of even a cheap glue stick. The glue stick for me gives a nice clean finish. It doesn't seep through and drying time is relatively fast. I can still work with it and do what I need to do without having to wait. Doesn't leave bumps underneath like a glue, like a glue gun would. So it's just a smooth and neat appearance. You'll see that in just a minute. You're going to press that down, take my wooden ruler and just press down and it's almost like you're ironing out the paper. You want to get it nice and flat. No bubbles underneath. Then take the sanding block and begin to sand away and downward at an angle. That's going to shear the edges of that paper off and give you a beautiful smooth clean finish. Do this all the way around and look at that. Perfect. Looks like it came right from the factory like that, doesn't it? Love it. Okay, so for the next one, here is some wrapping paper. This originally came from Target and probably in the dollar spot, but I got this from Dirt Cheap. I believe it was last year and I have used it on a different project. I'll try to link that for you because the two would match nicely in your decor. Again, just roughly cutting the border out. Because this is a light paper that you can see through, I don't want it to darken up by putting it on that brown. Plus you would see the little white residue that's left. So I'm gonna go ahead and just paint this entire thing white. And this will make the wrapping paper look more opaque and make our designs on there really pop. So consider painting first. You don't have to use chalk paint. That's just what I'm using, but consider painting first if you're gonna use a thin paper or something with a white background. It's really gonna make the details on your paper pop. Okay, so while that's drying, we're gonna go back to this tag with the snowflakes on it. 
and think about how we want to embellish it. Now I'm showing you all of this because I kind of want you to see my thought process and some options that you can use yourself. All right, so this is something that I took off another ornament last year and I saved it. This came from Dollar Tree. It's frosted, so I think it looks good with the snowflakes. It looks good with the winter theme. And this ribbon, I think, is just gorgeous. I think this ribbon came from Walmart. Just going to make a little shoelace bow here. Kind of think about how I want to place that. And you can do the same. Put it in the center, put it on the bottom, off to the side, whichever you choose. These are some frosted mini pine cones that came from Dollar Tree. I want to pick some of the tiny ones out because I don't want to overwhelm the top of that with huge pine cones. I want, I want mini because I want it to look nice. I guess what I'm looking for is proportion. So be sure that you poke the hole out where the tag is, where the, uh, the tag hanger goes. Okay, so I'm just using some hot glue to tack that down. I'm gonna put some little, I think this is table scatter, and I'm not sure where it came from. I've had it for years. And then I'm gonna start placing down my mini pine cones just a little at a time. I kind of go by what feels right when I look at it, uh, if that makes sense. And since I'm using it in my home, that's the important thing. Do what feels right to you, what feels good for you, and don't worry about what it might look like to someone else. Unless you're selling them, you know, do what makes you happy. Trimming up this ribbon, just putting a little slant on the edges, and I'm getting the spider webs off from the glue. Then I thought this ornament that I got from Dirt Cheap, I think it came from Target. It looks like one of Target's uh, originally. Would be so pretty here. It's like a ceramic, but it's rough. It's not glazed, in other words. So there's two sides. One has a little bit of pencil mark on it or scuff marks. So I'm just going to use that side to place the glue down. I'm using hot glue because the surface is porous and rough on the house so I think it'll fit just fine with the Gorilla Hot Glue. Now I'm taking another one of these same pieces that came off of a, a different ornament and I'm just going to cut it down and these make cute little frosted trees right like little snowy trees so we're just going to add those give our house a little shrubbery out front we want it to look like a farmhouse now it looks like it's nestled in the woods then I'm going to trim it out with a little bit of the ribbon that we used on top. I flip that over, tack it down with a little glue on the back. Isn't that cute? I love this. I'm gonna take some jute twine, just feed it through that hole, and here is a simple knot that you can use so that you can hang it. Just put my two fingers in the loop, grabbing the ends, pulling it and sliding the knot down. There you go. What do you think about that? Is that not the perfect little farmhouse mini tag? I love it. Okay, so our paint has dried and we're gonna use the glue stick again we're going to cover the surface of this quite well. Then I'm going to lay this down on top. Press it just a little. And then I'm going to grab my ruler. And then press it out just like we did the other one. And you can see that the green is really standing out on there. And the white background is nice and crisp because we painted first. Now we'll sand it. I 
I love this part. There you go. Beautiful little tag. Now, again, here are some ideas that you could use for your second tag. Those are both ornaments that I already had. And I decided to use some scrap pieces that I had. Both of these picks came from the Dollar Tree. I just cut those pieces off. And then these cute little gloves, look at that. They have fur on the top. These originally came from Target, but I got them at Dirt Cheap. I'm just going to decide where I want to put them and then slide the knot down on the strings and just simply tape them on the back. Now, if you were going to give this as a gift, of course you would want to use, you would want to trim that down and then put some brown packing paper or something like that on the back to make it neater. Nobody's going to see mine. Then I'm going to glue the second glove a little on top of the other and then down on the tag. We can put our greenery down. This is why we don't throw scraps away. We keep them because you can always use them for little pieces like this, little projects. Now I want this to lay flat so I'm trimming off one side. Otherwise when you put glue on it, it's not going to lay flat. It's going to stick up and you're not going to get a good grip on your surface. I don't want it to fall apart, so I'm going to trim it down, then add my glue. You still have the dimension on the other side so you're not losing anything by doing that. These little white pieces to me look like snow. And then I'm going to take this little piece of a pick, which I'm not sure where it came from, just to add a little red up there. Because I feel like this still says winter and it doesn't say Christmas. I'm going to use my chalk pen or chalk marker and just add a little bit of snow, just a little dusting of snow to the leaves. This does not have to be perfect. You can go right over the tips or you can make lines or however you want to do it. But I felt like since this was kind of a snowy theme for me, then I wanted to add some snow onto the greenery and onto my berries. You don't have to do this though. Guys, be sure to follow me on Instagram and on Pinterest. I've got that information and the links in the description box below. I'd love to see if you're doing any of these projects. If you've done any, tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see what you've got. And if you have any pins from things that you've copied that we've done here, be sure that you send me your link so I can check it out. I also have my email in the description box if you would like to contact me or if you have any questions that you don't want to leave in the comments. And there you go. Two cute little winter mini tags that you could keep out in your decor or you could give as a gift, but it'll last all winter. No need to put these away when you put the Christmas tree up. What do you think? Which one's your favorite? I love them both, but I have to say the one with the little farmhouse is my favorite. Thanks for watching, guys. Come back and see me soon. Bye.